everybody and welcome to another board game review and gameplay demo. Today's game is a deductive reasoning game that is all about a murder. Before I get started though, I would like to invite you, if you haven't done so already, to take a look at all my social media pages. On them you'll be able to see when I post new videos, when I release them, as well as fun articles, giveaways, and all sorts of other cool stuff. In addition, you can take a look at my Patreon page. If you decide to support me on Patreon, then you'll be able to see videos earlier, you get to vote on new videos that are going to be coming up, and all sorts of other cool stuff as well. That said, to get started with our video today, we have Incomodos Invitados. This is a deductive reasoning game that plays two to six people and it takes about an hour or so to play. It's a really interesting thing. It's already published in Spanish as you can tell by the name and essentially the company is looking to do a Kickstarter for an English version so they sent me this copy so that I can try it out. Jumping right in, I'm going to get started with what this game is similar to. As far as similarities are concerned, there are two major ones I wanted to talk about, the first of which is Clue. Clue, the game we all know and love, where you are trying to figure out who did the murder and how. Now, this game, very, very similar. You're trying to find out the same sort of information, but this one is much more complex. In this game, not only do you need to know the who and the how, but you also need to know the why. You need to find a motive, and in addition, sometimes you need to find out who the accomplice was. And then a big difference between this and Clue as well is that in Clue, you're playing as the individual characters, the suspects, whereas in this everybody is a detective. And so you're getting witness statements and coroner reports and stuff like that. And you're keeping track of it on a little sheet of paper, which brings me to my second similarity of alchemists. In that game, you're trying to figure out how different alchemical ingredients combine and then determine essentially what the features of those particular ingredients are. In this game, you're doing something really similar where you combine all of the evidence that everybody gives you and then you sort of say, well, this is the person who did it, this is the path they took through the house, this is the weapon they used, and then this is why they did it. So there's a lot going on with this game, it's a lot of fun, and I'm very excited to go right on ahead into my demo. Alright everybody, we're all set up and ready to start playing Awkward Guests. In this game, each player is a detective who is trying to figure out which of the awkward guests killed Mr. Walton at his dinner party. In this game, we are going to be using logical deduction and associations in order to determine who did it, how they did it, that is to say what weapon they used, and why they did it. In addition, at higher difficulty levels, we'll also need to figure out whether or not they had an accomplice. In this game, the information is obtained through these game cards. In the back of the instruction booklet, there are several dozen scenarios that you can pick from, ranging in difficulty from initiate all the way up to very difficult. And essentially, each one has a subset of the total of about 250 cards that represents all of the information needed to determine the who, what, when, and why. Now, in this game, at the higher difficulty levels, you have potential for an accomplice, but at the easier difficulties, you will never have one, so there's less deductive reasoning and less sort of uh, red herrings that uh, end up coming up in the game. Now, in order to set the game up, essentially everybody starts off with a set of six of the game cards, so everybody starts off with some amount of information. Now, everybody also starts off with one of these resolution tokens. These are played at the end of each round to essentially indicate if you want to guess what happened. Everybody also starts with an information sheet so that we can keep track of all of the information we get from the cards and the host of the game, whoever is hosting the party or whatever it is, gets the first player marker. Now going over the cards very briefly, there are several major types. We've got ones that are simply information and we know that something was missing. We've got information from the guests themselves. We have information from the service staff and then we have information from the mortician and and the police officers. Now it's important to note that anybody who works for the police or the service staff of Mr. Walton never lie to you. That's important to note when you potentially have accomplices on, on about. Now essentially each card will have a very similar design on them. At the top left hand corner is essentially going to be a value. It's a number between one and three and that becomes important in the later game rounds when I'll talk about that. In the top right hand corner it lists references. Again that's important for the 
inquiries. On some of the cards, you'll have a bunch of flavor text related to typically the character that it's about, and it doesn't really mean much, but then at the bottom of the card is really what you need. That's the actual direct information that this particular piece of evidence gets you. Okay. Now, essentially, like I mentioned, we're trying to track several different things. And if we look at our little sheet here, across the top, we've got all of the different suspects. Those are all the people who could have done it. We also have their particular motives that it could have been. And for each motive, we have two testimonies and one evidence piece, uh, depending on what they are. In addition, we have a map of the mansion. The four highlighted rooms, the billiard room, the hall, living room, and library, are the rooms where the guests potentially could have started. And essentially, in or part of the way that we need to play this game is we've got to figure out the direction they moved and how they moved through the mansion so that they could have picked up whatever the murder weapon was and then got to the study or the crime scene, which is where Mr. Walton was found. At the very bottom of the sheet are all of the different weapons. And this is where like the mortician and everybody's going to come into play because it will give us signs on the body. And for example, were there any defensive wounds or was there burning or was there soil, were there odors, all that kind of stuff. And each weapon is associated with some of those things. So that's how we can eliminate some of the weapons and figure out what actually happened. Last but not least, there is a resolution box. Whenever you think you know what it is, you write down your answer there, and then you can check it in the back of the book to see if you're right. But we will get to that a little bit later. The way that the game works is first off, we're going to take a look at our first six cards. So for example, I got a really good one here. It's a value three from our more Mortician. Now, this says, after examining the body, the forensic surgeon did not report any defensive wounds. Now, if we look at our sheet, defensive wounds are indicated by the number one. So we would eliminate things like the Q, the pool Q, the Derringer, the kitchen knife, and uh, what else? And the curtain cord from the library. So all of those would have created defensive wounds, and since we didn't see any, then we know that those weapons weren't the cause. And that's essentially how we do this. We're gonna be essentially crossing off potential options as we go through. In addition, we have the staff of the mansion, and they will tell us, for example, movements. Like this one right here says that no guests went from the garage to the study. In other words, there is a path up on what looks like the northwestern side here, where we've got the garage, and than the study. So you would put a big X there indicating no one moved. There are only certain movement paths that people can take and that's one way to eliminate possibilities for what people could have done. So that's the big part of this game is just translating the information from these cards onto our paper. Now, the actual game, the way it works, it goes in three rounds. The first one is the inquiry phase, right? Or rather three phases per round. And during the inquiry phase, you'll look at your cards, you'll look at the information you have, you'll have your information behind your little sheet here, and then you say two things that you want information about. Now you can list two rooms, you can list two guests, or you can list one of each. For, for example, I could say I want information on Stanley Smythe and the library. I could say I want information on the study or the crime scene and the garage, whatever it happens to be. And then what everybody does is they will go through their cards and figure out what they want to exchange. And this is where the numbers in the top left-hand corner come into play. Essentially, the the person making an offer has to have one card that matches at least one of the requested references. For example, if I requested the, the garage or the study, then I could use this card that says nobody went from the garage to the study. And so I could put that and then another few random cards for a total of four points. And then I would take my little offer token and put the four on top just like that. And that would be, say, this player over here. And they would say that's what they're offering. This person would do the same. And then when an offer is accepted, then the person who made the offer will take an equal or greater number, an equal or greater value of inquiry points, take them out of their hand, and exchange for the cards that were left on the table. And that's essentially the main portion of the game. That's how it works. After everybody has done that, after we go around, then every, at the end of each round, everybody will use this resolution token. The way this works is you put it on the table however you wish. If you have all the information, you would put it with the light side up with all the exclamation points. If you don't know what happened, you would put the question marks. So you put it down, you put your hand 
hand over it. We say one, two, three, everybody uncovers. And if anybody said that they want to guess, they'll write it down and check the book to see if they are correct. If they are correct, they win. If they're wrong, they're eliminated from the game and they're not allowed to play anymore. At the end of each round, everybody is going to discard down to three cards. And then at the beginning of each round, then you draw back up to six again. Anytime you discard cards, they go into the, this little thing right here. They go face down with this confidential card on top of them so that you can't see the actual numerical values on each of the cards, essentially. Once all of the cards from this are are gone essentially. You take them, then you reshuffle them, and then you take three and put them face up so that everybody has access to that information. And essentially you just keep going until somebody solves the murder. Now, similarly to alchemists, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's all about how you track the information and making certain that you are correct in how you may take your notes and all that kind of stuff. But overall, a very simple game, but tremendously fun, very Sherlock Holmesian and all of that good stuff. But that's enough rambling for this section of the video. We're going to go right on into my pros, cons, and general conclusions. Moving into pros and cons for this game, the biggest pro for me personally is the style of game and the mechanic behind it, essentially the logical reasoning and the logical deduction. I absolutely adore these kinds of games. I love investigation and detective work and all of that kind of thing. Second major pro for me is the complexity that they're able to bring to the table and along with that, the absolute incredible diversity that they have within just this little box, which is something that you really don't see having literally dozens of scenarios ranging across, I believe it's six different difficulty levels, makes for a very replayable and very fun game that is relatively easy to get into because you can play on the initiate difficulty and then go from there type of thing. The other really major pro for me is the fact that the game moves relatively quickly and efficiently and you don't have a lot of downtime. A lot of times with games like this where you've got a lot of thinking and deduction and stuff like that, you tend to have a lot of downtime where one person is doing a thing and everyone else is just sort of waiting around. While in this game you do have a little bit of that, you don't have nearly as much of it as you see in some other games that are similar to this, which I really, really appreciate. Moving into the cons, there are a few that I wanted to mention. The first and foremost one is that if you are wrong about what happened, then you are out of the game. And I find that to be really sort of disjointing, and I understand the reasoning behind it because the whole point is that you look in the back of the book and see what happened. And so if you're wrong, then obviously you can't be in anymore because then you know what happened. And one of the things that I really appreciate is the fact that the company who made this is working on an app where not only will you have a lot more scenarios, but you'll be able to check to see if you're correct through the app. And instead of telling you what the scenario was, it instead just says, no, you're incorrect, which I find to be extremely helpful. Um, the app isn't out yet. Again, this is uh, sort of pre-Kickstarter for the English version, at least. And to my knowledge, there isn't a Spanish version of the app. But overall, I really enjoyed Awkward Guests. I thought it was great. I really appreciate, again, the company sending me this copy. But on Honestly, I really enjoyed it. It is definitely right up my alley. Lots of fun with the logical reasoning. If you like those types of games, this is definitely for you. If you're not one for thinking or if you're not really detail oriented or anything like that, it's not one that I can really recommend. But even so, right now they actually do have a print and play available. So you can go to their website and check that out just to give it a try uh, ahead of the Kickstarter. But with that, thank you very, very much for watching this. Hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.